Hello everyone who watched this video. Right now I'm on the point of speaking about the 10 films which in my opinion won't leave you cold. To begin with I want to speak about Italian comedy The Taming of the Scoundrel directed by Franco Castellano and Giuseppe Macchia. Starring Adriano Celentano and Arella Muti, this picture was the top grossing film in Italian market for the season 1980 and 1981. Adriano Celentano stars in the role of Elia, a well-to-do and self-confident farmer who is also well known as a misogynist and cantankerous bachelor living with a housemate and his dog in an Italian village. The film starts with men talking about Elias and Berba character and these statements are illustrated by him entering and insulting everybody who comes in his way. The housemaid finds women for Elia, but he always succeeds in chasing them away with his awfulness until only rainy night someone knocks his door and gorgeous Lisa, in the performances of Ornella Muti, enters his house and in, in the movie. He insults her with a gusto and tries to resist her charms, but she says to prove that no one can resist love when it comes. The film is fine and funny, although not a cinematic monument as it's empty of serious content. It's just an amusing comedy, with good humor, spectacular views of provincial Italy as a background, an amazing act provided by this star couple. At the time of its release, the picture was a smash hit with the public in Italy. I strongly recommend to watch this amazing comedy in order to spend your time with benefits. Walt Disney's beloved theme park ride comes to life in the hilariously entertaining comedy action film Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, by the director Gore Verbinski, starring Johnny Depp, Jeffrey Rush, Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley. This swashbacking tale follows the quest of Captain Jack Sparrow, a witty pirate, and Will Turner, a resourceful blacksmith, as they search for Elizabeth Swan. Elizabeth, the daughter of the governor and the love of Will's life, has been kidnapped by the feared Captain Barbosa. Little do they know, but the fierce and clever Barbosa has been cursed. He, along with his large crew, are under an ancient curse, doomed for eternity to neither live nor die. What a good popcorn film needs is the sleep from Romans into comedy and action. But thanks to Verbinski, everything can go much higher and better than we expected. Since the beginning, the film presents a superb script with a good, flowing and entertaining narrative that goes from memorable phrases to intelligent humor. And special effects together with a catching soundtrack make this film more spectacular. Besides, this picture was cast to advantage. While the character of Will Turner is a bit melodramic and annoying, Orlando Bloom's good looks and some really smart one-liners make him lovable in the end. Kira Knightley's character wasn't all that special or different, but she shined in her portrayal of the beautiful rich girl who secretly longs for adventure. But Johnny Depp outshone everybody in the performances of a very tan, very loud and very drunk pirate. To sum up everything, this breathtaking family adventure film has action, humor, romance, mystery, special effects and it's so delightful that the viewer doesn't feel the running time of 143 minutes. Watch it if you suffer from lack of action in your life. The eighth place goes to the engrossing American computer animated action comedy film and western Rango directed again by Gore Verbinski and produced by Graham King. Suffice it to say that Rango was a critical and commercial success and won the Academy Award for the Best Animated Feature. Rango is a pet chameleon who suffers from lack of adventure. After a car accident he winds up in an old western town called Dirt. What this town needs the most is water 
but they also need a hero and a sheriff. The Thess Rango instantly takes on the role of both and selfishly agrees to take on the case of the missing water. To begin with, the animation is outstanding, which leaves a deep and lasting impression on the audience. Not only do the characters move convincingly, but the colors look gorgeous and the backgrounds are imaginative and stunning. The soundtrack is another plus. The quizzical band of singing mariachi owls appearing throughout the film helps to complete the atmosphere of classic spaghetti western. Although such films as The Good, The Bad and The Ugly and The Fistful of Dollars had impact on Rango, this picture is not the western in the raw, but an exceedingly subtle, elegant and witty parody. The script is funny, smart and quirky. The characters are likable with heart and don't fall into the trap of being too cliché. The voice acting is wonderful. Both Johnny Depp and Bill Nighy Rattlesnake Jake give knockout performances, while Isla Fisher, Ned Beatty and Abigail Breslin are equally terrific. I assure you, this film won't leave you cold. Got hope. Next film I'm going to speak is about World War II. However, it has nothing to do with drama, tragedy, or noble heroism. Inglorious Bastards by Quentin Tarantino is an engrossing piece of filmmaking, while at the same time is an outrageous case of hooliganism in cinematography. With interesting dialogues, perfect time comedy, and with a dash of brutal scenes of assassination. Speaking about the plot, I must point out that Tarantino wanted to create the film consisting of few parts. As a result, he made one film, which includes five short film stories. I'm not going to delve into the description of the plot, because it's pointless. You'd better watch it by yourself. Let's come to the point of the cast, since I assure you it deserves special attention. Brad Pitt is in the list of my idols and here he stars in the key role of ruthless leader of Jewish-American band of Nazi exterminators. Mel Lorraine creates a true-to-life image of Jewish Shoshana, who is the goal of a lifetime is revenge for the death of her family. But real revelation to me was the German actor Christoph Waltz, who succeeded in giving a convincing portrayal of the Jew hunter of the SS. Suave, sophisticated and cruel. As the previous film in my collection, it resembles some kind of a parody, but it's not an animation and definitely inappropriate for children. Inglorious Bastards makes no apologies, asks for no forgiveness. Tarantino doesn't care if he offends, if he steps all over stereotypes and cliches. It's great to see a filmmaker whose work clearly isn't interfered with puzzling comments of all these crusty, conservative and pompous critics. Tarantino is a master of cranking up immense tension and suddenly mixing it with laugh out loud moments. You are not sure if you should be looking away in disgust or rolling around laughing. Either way it's a roller coaster and one not to be missed. It's not a film to everyone's taste, certainly if you are not a fan of Tarantino's style. This may be a little hard to swallow, but nevertheless it's a film which simply has to be seen. You honor. That's a bingo! <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo? You just say bingo. Gentleman of Fortune is an exciting Soviet comedy, filmed at Mosfilm. It was directed by Alexander Seri. Georgi Danelia assisted him and wrote the script. This star-studied film include famous Soviet actors such as Evgeny Leonov, Savely Kramerov, Georgi Vitsin and Radner Muratov. The plot is basically that a convict, Totsin, escapes from prison and the militia, Russian police, find the criminal's look like -li a kindergartner teacher. He goes undercover and pretends to be a criminal to help the militia find the where the real convict has hidden a stolen mask. He makes a phony escape from the prison with two others who think he is the real Totsin. 
he eventually be friends with them and they become attached, but I won't reveal the rest. I suppose it will be interesting for you to watch it by yourself. A satiric and witty movie that won't leave you cold. Without obscure and complex ideas, this picture has all the necessary things for being a good film. For instance, absorbing adventurous plot, captivating performances of famous Soviet actors, the humor is rather intelligent without being banal or vulgar, carefully selected musical tracks and it's technically brilliant for that times. By the way, it was shot in 1981. All in all, this outstanding comedy is worth seeing for the entire family. Next film is a documentary, which underlay the idea of genesis of the International Documentary Film Festival Flyer Tiana. Nanook of the North is an outstanding mute black and white picture directed by Robert Flaherty, started a new turn in the world of documentary films. In this picture an amazing discovery was made. Nobody was really familiar with how people lived on the Arctic. The movie concentrates on family of Eskimos, Inuit. Basically, their entire life is about one thing, finding food for the day, for survival. Everything they do revolve around food. At times, Robert Flaherty's documentary resembles a home movie, concentrating on Nanook's family's personality, rather than simply the actions they take part in. He does this primarily through the use of close-up and filming private moments, such as the family waking up. The documentary was clearly trying to appeal to our feelings of the unity with nature, as we have lost the cyclic natural time conscious, trembling and reverence before the power of nature, which was so familiar to primordial peoples. This simple and at the same respectful attitude to nature is pointed out through the detailed description of everyday life of the Inuits. It was a very persuasive presentation, since Flaherty used ethnographic stuff as the basis to create a profound and ultimate masterwork. He didn't separate cinematography from reality. His camera was always a participator in the real-life events. Thanks to his talent, he managed to snatch and transfer the special spirit of that people existing in isolation from outside influence. It's rare accomplishment. Untouchable or One Plus One is a French superb tragic comedy based on real life of real people, directed by Oliver Nakash, Eric Toledano, and starring Francois Cluzet, Amar Sai, and Anne Linai. Although we see a tragedy in the genre of the film, this inspirational life affirming picture has nothing to do with all these sentimental and mournful tear jerkers. This movie is so easily it could have become a forced and melodramatic one, but luckily it's one that Goat made with lots of tact and skill, making this one fine drama with a comical touch to it as well. Philip is a wealthy quadriplegic widower who is interviewing candidates for a caregiver. Dries is recently released from jail, street hustler from ghettos who is just trying to qualify for state benefits by going on the required interviews. Philip is struck by Dries's direct approach and energy level and chooses Dries over the room full of more qualified types. The rest of the movie is really a body flick where the polar opposites bring much to the other. What makes this film really unique and captivating is that Dries never takes pity on Philip nor does he let him drift into self-pity. The screenplay is excellent, the cast is also fantastic, and the chemistry between Francois Cluzet and Omar Sy is amazing. Cluzet and Sy are simply so terrific in their roles, that you really do feel as if you were watching real people with real issues. The delightful soundtrack complements this picture. Directors do a remarkable job balancing the comedy with the drama and in the end they really create such a special atmosphere that's impossible not to get caught up with it. There's another animation in my list, 
Avatar The Last Airbender is a hybrid animation of joint production by Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Coniesco, consisting of three seasons called books, each of them consists of 20 or 21 episodes. To begin with, I should say that though it's a hybrid of anime and American cartoons, it's definitely not anime in the role. Avatar The Last Airbender is a fusion of Eastern philosophy, Hinduism and martial arts is set in a far-off land where four tribes rule the world and the most gifted members of each tribe have mastery over the four Greek elements air, earth, fire and water. The mastery of each of these is the term bending, the ability to manipulate each element and use it for creative or destructive purposes. The avatar, a sort of Chris Buddha-like figure, has mastery over all elements and is the most powerful bender of all. There is a constant cycle of reincarnations of the spirit of Avatar in one of the four nations. His mission is to protect the balance of the world between the four nations, between the human world and the world of spirits, between good and evil. The people who make Avatar have managed to create a story that, while especially suitable for younger people, has elements that resonate with all age groups in as much as the show raises the variety of problems, overcoming difficult situations, trusting others and yourself, the necessity of self-discipline and effort, and the value of moderation and balance. Besides, it's a merely pleasant and rather educational tale with brilliant humor which, although being childish in a way, won't leave you cold. The characterization is great and the voice actors feed the characters well. The martial arts and bending of the elements are really gripping, as a lot of thought was put into it. And special thanks to Jeremy Zuckerman, the composer of the show, who succeeded to create admirable oriental music. I would recommend this show to anyone who still has enough imagination to fully appreciate it and to anyone mature enough to be able to enjoy something that a kid could enjoy as well. The following picture is an outstanding example of using cinematography as an instrument to inspire people. The Pursuit of Happiness is an American biographical drama film based on Chris Gardner's nearly one year struggle with homelessness. Directed by Gabriel Muccino, the film features Will Smith as Gardner, a known and off homeless salesman. Smith's, Smith's son, Jaden Smith, co-stars, making his film debut as Gardner's son, Christopher Jr. Chris Gardner is a struggling salesman, trying just to make the rent, buy food and take the best care of his son that he possibly can. When his wife leaves him and his son to get and his son to go get a better life, Chris is left on his own. But he wins an internship at that Stokes broker company that is very competitive. Against incredible odds, he just pulls through the ultimate lows of life and keeps his head up with his son by his side. They become homeless, living in hotels homeless shelters and even a crudy subway bathroom. But Chris holds on to his ultimate dream of being happy and giving him and his son the life they truly deserve. This movie in every way possible is perfect. It was so brilliantly made and just so exciting. Special thanks to Will Smith. His point his poignant portrayal of the struggling Chris Gardner is one of the single most inspiring on-screen performances of the past 20 years. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Will Son did an awesome job. Though the tone of the movie seems quite serious, the occasionally witty dialogues and superb narrative result in a good laugh here and there, and the movie has an excellent pace. The Pursuit of Happiness is an exceptional movie, sometimes sentimental in a way, but truly rousing, living a deep and lasting impression, and really goes to show what you can do when you really are dedicated and determined to make something better out of your life.
Finally, we have reached the first place of my list. Before we start, I warn you to keep children away from the screen, as well as people with mental disorders and lack of imagination. The following film is a screen adaptation of the comic book. It has nothing to do with generosity, honor and honesty of Justice League or Avengers. It has extremely graphic and scenes of excessive violence. And it has sex and nudity. Watchmen is an American film directed by Zack Snyder who adapted comics masters Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' graphic novel of the same name, starring an assembled cast of Melon Ackerman, Billy Crudup, Matthew Goody, Jackie L. Haley, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Patrick Wilson, this violent and resonant but undoubtedly absorbing picture received mixed assessments. Some people claim that it was a total flop, some praise it unreservedly. As I see it, this picture is a masterpiece. The film is set in alternate history of 1985, at the, height of the, at, the, at the height of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. In the film, a group of retired vigilants investigates an apparent conspiracy against them and uncovers something even more grandiose and sinister. Speaking about the comics, Watchmen was an extremely complex graphic novel, filled with a lot of flawed casting characters, strong plot, powerful sense of style and also contained a world that seems a little too close to our own. The movie carries every one of these elements in the best way it possibly could. It's an admirable example of screen adaptation, as the film stays true to the novel and only changes a few details. Each character is so rich and unique, the actors are perfectly cast to bring these characters to life. The soundtrack is really powerful and appeals so much to the audience. Since the film is a period piece, it makes sense to blend the music of the times into the characters' lives. This is the story of what would happen in our world if these characters existed in it. In our world, music is very tied in our, into our history. In conclusion, I must say, it's not an easy film to watch, with provocative ideas, unusual story and moments of extreme of, ex of extreme nastiness. However, Watchmen is a worth seeing movie, and despite its long running time of three hours, I believe this film you will never forget. This is the end of my presentation. I hope it was quite informative, and some of you will definitely add something in your own list. Goodbye.